Hello. Thank you for joining us in this special time of studying God's Word. This presentation of God's Word is brought to you by the Waverly Church of Christ. Our address is 438 West Main Street, Waverly, Tennessee, zip code 37185. Please contact us at 931-296-3213 if you have any questions, would like to receive free Bible study material, or have a need we might be able to help with. It is our prayer that God will bless you in this study. The elders of the Waverly Church of Christ have set before her members part of a plan to help the congregation grow and flourish in our area. The men who lead us have requested two things of every member. The first thing they have asked is that we pray every day for the elders, deacons, ministers, secretaries, and each member. A copy of a letter that explains this and a little more was included in a previous printing of the bulletin, and that same letter was mailed separately to our families. You can refer to the letter for some specific prayer requests concerning each of the categories mentioned a moment ago. The second thing the elders have asked us to do concerns greater involvement in the Lord's work. Each of us needs to be more involved in the Lord's work. The intent is to help the congregation be even more fruitful. Jeff and I have been given a third request, which is to present lessons on the need for each member to use the gifts and talents with which the Lord has blessed us more effectively in His service. Together with God's guidance and blessing, there is no limit to what we all can do. With these thoughts in mind, much of the planning and preparation is complete, and the work lies ahead of us. As with any attempt to build up, there must be a good, solid foundation, which brings me to a question. What unites us? What unites Christians? What unites the church, her members, the congregation on Main Street in Waverly, Tennessee? Several things unite us. But let us focus on the Bible in this study. The Bible is united. All Scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. The Bible ultimately has one source, God. God breathed out His message to 40 writers of various backgrounds, occupations, and languages. The message of God was completed over a period of some 15 to 1600 years. 66 books comprise the teachings of God for man, specifically for man's teaching, reproof, correction, and training in righteousness. Due to their time and space, the human writers were not able to consult one another. Nevertheless, the Bible is harmonious and united because of its ultimate source. The Word of God provides instruction to produce proper behavior. Why is all Scripture inspired by God? Looking at 2 Timothy 3 and verse 17, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Peter wrote that God's divine power has granted us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and excellence of character. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible is united because it has one source, God. 
one aim to give us everything we need for life and godliness and one goal, the saving of souls who believe and obey its message. The Bible is an equalizer. The Bible is unique from all other books for the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. God's word reveals the true nature of every person's thoughts and intentions. To say the word of God is able to judge is to say that God judges. The Bible informs us regarding salvation. Salvation is deliverance from the power and effects of sin, which must be judged. Romans chapter 11 verse 22 reads, Behold then, pay attention to this, take account of the kindness and severity of God. Some believers only want to focus on the kindness of God, while some unbelievers want to focus only on the severity of God. Both miss the whole character of God. He is both kind and severe. God's severity is shown to those who fail, a reference to those who have sinned. God's kindness, His doing of good, is shown to those who continue in His kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. Being cut off is spoken of in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 when it informs us that the wages of sin is death. There is the severity. But the free gift of God, there is the kindness, is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sin separates man from God. Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not so short that it cannot save, nor is his ear so dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. The Lord can save. The Lord will save. Man can choose to sin. Man does choose to sin. Sin, iniquities, separate us from God. Jesus, though, came to earth to save us from our sins. Matthew 1 verse 21. The gospel is the good news of salvation that God has made possible through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. See also 1 Corinthians chapter 15. God has given authority to His Son, Jesus Christ, whom He appointed to judge all the world in righteousness. Acts 17 verse 31. Jesus said, He who rejects me and does not receive my sayings has one who judges him. The word I spoke is what will judge him at the last day. John chapter 12 and verse 48. Jesus went on to say in the next two verses, For I did not speak on my own initiative, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a commandment as to what to say and what to speak. I know that his commandment is eternal life. Therefore, the things I speak, I speak just as the Father has told me. The unity between God and his Son is such that what Jesus said and what the Father commands are the same. We will be judged by the word of God, the sayings of Jesus. Jude penned, I felt the necessity to write to you appealing that you contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all handed down to the saints, the holy ones, verse 3, Jude being just one chapter in length. We are exhorted, encouraged, admonished, and even urged to fight for and actively promote the faith which the Christian teaching embodied in the Bible. The Bible, from a Latin word meaning books, and its teachings inform readers about how to be holy, called by God, consecrated or dedicated to God. The Bible puts every human being on equal footing to approach God. Romans chapter 3 and verse 3, verse 23 says, Everyone has sinned. 
Everyone needs grace, love, mercy, strength, and peace, which only God can give. Everyone needs Christ, through whom all these blessings and many more are given by God. Each person must humble him or herself to deny self, take up the cross, and follow Jesus. Mark chapter 8, verse 34. The Bible sets everyone on the same level as sinners in need of God's help. The Bible also explains what everyone needs and how to get what is needed. In truth, we are all sinners in need of God's grace to be saved from sin, bringing the hope of eternal life. To receive God's grace, we must obey His will. The Bible is milk and meat. The Bible is the source of spiritual nourishment. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ, Romans 10 and verse 17. Preaching or teaching about Christ is what God chose to be the means through which faith toward God is established and developed in people. God works through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 21. Peter instructed those who have come to God for salvation, like newborn babies, long for the pure milk of the word so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. If you have tasted the kindness of the Lord, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. It is through the continual hearing of the message about Christ that we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. Steady progress in our faith is the intent of growing in the grace. A deeper understanding of Christ is the purpose of continual study and meditation upon the good news of Jesus. Students of God's word are to feast on the milk, the elementary principles of the oracles or sayings of God, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse number 12 so they may work up to solid food, which is for the mature, who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. Hebrews 5 and verse 14. Aged Christians feasting only on the milk of the word is a sign of infancy, a lack of maturity, and the need for more teaching on the basics. It is for those who, who have matured in the faith to be teachers. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12, sharing the milk with others. James wrote, the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness, in humility receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. James 1 verses 20 and 21. A maturing Christian works diligently to address anger, do away with moral uncleanness and wickedness, the perverting of virtue or moral principles from their purposes to evil ends. Furthermore, Christians are to receive, welcome, accept the word or the gospel deeply fixed or set within them, which is able to save our souls. James continues, But prove yourselves doers of the word, and not merely hearers who delude themselves. Only hearing the word, but not acting based on the word, cleverly deceives a person. Doers of the word turn the message into action. In fact, the word demands a response by action. James illustrates his teaching. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. If the idea is to start something new tomorrow based on a discovery made in God's word today, you will likely not get around to it. 
tomorrow you will you will have forgotten the change to be made, lack the motivation to get started or be busy with other things. But one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man is blessed in what he does. Looks intently translates a Greek participle meaning to stoop down sideways to look. The word is used of Jesus' disciples looking intently into the tomb to see whether it was really empty. John chapter 20 verses 5 and 11. This term conveys the thought of stopping to take a close look by intention. The word of truth, verse 18, the implanted word, verse 21, the word, verse 22, are more or less equivalent to the expression, the perfect law, that is explained as the perfect law of liberty, in verse 25. The student who reads intently, studies carefully the word or law, abides by it. The person continues to pay attention to the message, forms a habit of looking at it, continues to look in the Word. The student is further defined as becoming not a hearer of forgetfulness, but a doer of work. A doer of work is an active worker, an active agent. The man who listens and acts is one who puts the law or word into practice. This man, this man will be blessed in his doing. The first three chapters of the Bible and the last three chapters of the Bible contain information about the origin and destiny of man which is not found anywhere else in the world. The unity of the Bible proves it is not written by mere men, but the ultimate source is God. God's word is an equalizer equalizer that tells all people they are sinners and sin separates man from God. God has done his part to free man from sin through his son's death, burial, and resurrection. Through God's grace, all people are on equal footing to approach God. The milk of the word develops faith in those who accept the good news. The meat of the word continues to develop faith in those who are seasoned in the word of truth. All listeners of the perfect law of liberty are commanded to be doers active workers who practice what the word teaches for spiritual growth every member of the body of christ must recognize the various levels of faith the various depths of scriptural understanding and the various degrees of spiritual maturity among us no lesson no matter how basic is fluff Recognize that not every lesson from the Bible will hit home with you every time. What you think you no longer need may be the very thing someone else needs to get started. Do not assume that everyone believes what you think their background would suggest. In other words, recognize that growth has taken place in the lives of believers and they probably do not hold to the error they were once taught. When in doubt, ask. Do not assume. Acknowledge the goodness and severity of God and that each person is subject only to God. The Bible tells the most amazing story of love. God loves his creation. He gave humans the ability to choose, and the first couple chose to disobey God, bringing the severity of God to light against sin. God's creation does not always love him, but God never stops loving his creation. 
Since man's sin separates him from God, God sought to restore the broken relationship. In fact, God planned from before the beginning of time to send His holy and righteous Son to die for man's sins so that He could be one with God again. God's Son would be the connection between God and man that could not be disrupted. The Son of God came to earth revealing God to humans, but people who hated Him killed Him. And buried him. When, he, when it seemed that all hope for man was lost, God resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead. Now Jesus lives eternally, bringing salvation to all people who hear this wonderful, Holy Spirit-inspired message and believe God and His Son. Those who believe are instructed to repent of their sins confess belief in Christ as the Son of God, and be baptized to be cleansed, set free from sin, to live a new life under the guidance of God's Word. If you have not surrendered your life to Christ, please contact us. We would love to point you in the direction of Bible answers to questions you may have. We would love to study with you further or to assist you in being baptized or being restored if you are a Christian that has wandered away from the family of God. This is part of why the Bible unites us. Would you bow with me in prayer? Almighty God, we are so amazed at the way in which your word has been preserved. You breathed out your message, and through your Spirit, men wrote down your words, your message to us. And this beautiful letter of love that comes directly from heaven tells us all that we need to know and everything we need to do that pertains to life and godliness. We ask that you help us as we read and study your word so that we may understand the things which are needed concerning salvation. We ask, Father, that when our hearts and minds are against you, that you will humbly break us, that you will bring us to the point at which we will be once again ready and willing to receive your message and to be obedient to your will. We're thankful that when we do not love you, and we fall short of your glory, and we sin that you do not stop loving us. And it's that great love that you have had for us, which is on display in the sending of your Son, who died upon the cross so that we could have forgiveness of our sins, have the hope of eternal life, and be joined together with many other believers of like precious faith. We're thankful for the opportunity and privilege to study together And we're thankful for the opportunity to accept your word, which is united in every aspect, teaching the same message, presenting the same goals and purpose for living, and showing us the way to you. We're thankful that we have your word to go back and look at time and again, to refresh our memories, to learn new things, to continue to grow. We ask, Father, that you help us not to forget where we came from, but to recognize and remember that we too at one time were without the knowledge of your word. As we work to grow and mature in the faith, help us to always dedicate ourselves to you and to you alone. Father, we're thankful for all who have listened to the study of your word at this time. We ask that you bless them in a very special way. We also ask that you forgive us of our sins, as you know that we still make mistakes. But being your children, we have the wonderful blessing of having our sins continually washed away as we walk in the light, as your Son also is in the light. We ask, Father, that as we continue to move forward in these studies, that you will bless our studies, bless our efforts to grow and to strengthen our relationship with one another, most importantly, strengthening our relationship with you. And as we do so, that the church may grow, the church may flourish, not only in our area, but the world over. 
We're thankful, Father, for all the many wonderful gifts and abilities, the talents you have given to each and every person. Help us to see the ways and the opportunities where we have to use them. Give us the courage to use them. Give us the uh, strength needed to carry out the task and to be the light before a lost and dying world. Help us to always strive to live for you in everything that we say and everything that we do. We're thankful that you hear our prayers and answer them. We ask, Father, that you continue to be with us, continue to watch over us, continue to help us, and bless us as you see fit. In the name of Christ, we ask and express these things to you. Amen. Thank you for joining with us in this study. We appreciate your participation. To find other content, you may visit waverlychurchofchrist.org. Search for us on YouTube or Facebook at Waverly Church of Christ. If you have children, search for Waverly Church of Christ Youth and Family Ministry on Facebook or Waverly Church of Christ Youth and Family on YouTube. You may listen on the radio AM 1060, FM 93.5 on Sundays at 10 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Monday through Friday at 12.30 p.m. You may watch us on television, the local cable channel 3, on Sundays at 1 p.m. Thank you and have a great day.